Hello. Welcome to another ball blog video diary. I'm looking at the garden and the, the birds are out looking for all they've got there. They've got their feed. And they're singing. And it's it's one of those periods we're in another transition. Well I say a transition phase in the garden. But the garden's always in transition. It's never static. We get periods when a group of plants flowers, like very early in the spring when we had the, the snowdrops and the aranthus. And then we get the later flowers, the erythroniums and the corydalis and others. And then you go through all the range, so it's always in transit, always changing through the season, and then it's in transit through the years. Because each year things are different. The weather's different. Plants, gr some plants grow. Some plants don't do so well. So I'm going to just have a wander around and see what we see. The Crinodendron, Ucurianum, they're coming out. The hanging flowers are not quite fully expanded. If you ever get a chance to see this plant, if you don't know it, just touch the petals. They're really quite thick. They're more like the peel of a of a tangerine or an orange or something. But down here we've got the some of the troughs. The saxes are long over and now it's the wee aranthus and some of the summer flowering saxes that pop up. Among them we've got the the plant that many people criticise and complain about, the Mechanopsis cambrica or as we should now call it Papaver cambricum. And it seeds around, but very easy if you don't want too much, just as the flowers pass over, remove the seed pod to restrict its spread. Aquilegias, they seed around. So we've a whole bunch here. And then another seeder is the Pseudofumaria, that's Pseudofumaria alba, and then there's Lutea. If I just come round past the some of the other troughs in the greenhouse up the side, we have a whole batch here of along the side of the house, along the side of the path. More aquilegias. We've got the Fumaria, the Alba, and there's some of the Lutea there. The, the, there's more Lutea. So these are all growing up the side here. At the other side of the path are our strawberries, sitting right below the greenhouse. They've been flowering well and getting pollinated. Fairly typical in the garden is I'm always propagating and doing things and this is some Hepatica nobilis that I, I lifted. It, it's, it, was in an area that got very dry now and was the leaves were quite flopped so sit it in a tray with some water to rehydrate the roots and then I'll, later today I'll split it down and plant it out into different situations where it can start a new colony and spread out from there. So propagation is always ongoing by, by the gardeners as well as the allowing just nature to seed. You can see how the beds that were once empty and then filled with the early flowers are now overgrown, jungle-like. The ferns growing up and the aconites, dicentras there among everything else. This bed, the dry weather has now pushed the anemone and the other carpeting ground carpeting plants down. They've gone. And now we see the all the spikes. The sea of Arisimas. And there's lilies in there. And I was going to should come round and mention as well the irises. Peonies up in the distance, the white peony emodii. 
It's just really rather jungle-like. You have your Lauria foliage. Lots of lilies, but they're not out yet. They will flower in the coming weeks. The grasses are pretty with the aquilegias and the digitalis. An area here where I took out a giant old, old, old cassiope. It was over a metre tall and just replanting this area up with some young plants and some cuttings and seedlings. Coming up here to Corydalis, Crates in Blue. Quite wide, widely spread in cultivation and quite widely available to many of you. It's a great plant. It's very accommodating. More so than any of its parents, it seems to adapt to many different garden environments and types. So most people seem to be able to grow it, which is what makes it a good garden plant. So we'll get everything from tiny rhododendrons. So you can see a Riparoides rock, I think we used to call this. Creeping down there. Coming round to the top bed. You can see how important to this landscape and what makes it natural. One of the most, the key plants in recent years has, be, has become Geranium robertianum. This tiny geranium that seeds around. It's got these lovely soft foliage and it just covers the ground and gives you a foil for the bigger plants to come through. You can see camasias there. You can see in here there's more aracemas. I can see Corydalis craigs in purple over there. The Doronicum orientale. I'm highlighting with the same colour as the the Mechanopsis or the Papaver Cambricum. Again, more lilies, more Camasias, I see them in there. You can see the Erythronium seed pods, so the, in this bed was where there was lots of Erythroniums and Trilliums. There's Peonies. Around here there's more Peony. Peony of each eye. Woodwardii. Really nice. And it seeds around. Here's a seedling out in the path. And there's lots of seedlings in there. So this is the way, even the peonies, we allow them to seed. So Mizia walker I. But this is the transitional stage of some of the beds. Crocus leaves gone down. There's alliums that will come up in here. The, I can see the leaves, the fresh green leaves we're seeing here. These are some of the alliums that will flower a bit later. So we're always looking for that cycle, that sequence of other plants that will come. I'm searching as I'm filming to see what I see. It's always, it's always fun to walk around the garden and as, as well as seeing all the, the weedy stuff. The stuff, you know, that I try to keep back and keep down, but it's not always possible. It's easy to get the big, the bigger weeds, but some of these wee poppers that run around, the wee card cardamines and stuff like that, they're, they're a bit of a pain, but to be honest, they don't cause a lot of problems. I see here the seed pods coming on the Trillium hibrisoni up here. I'm watching them because I will move, collect that seed and sow it elsewhere.
also watching and seeing in there you can see the seed pods of the Jefferson Jeffersonia. Now we've got here with the yellow below me and then up above. The laburnum. The burnum sitting beside the Acer Grissium. It's a really good one with very, very long dangly racemes. And when it when the flowers fade I'll get my big loppers out that reach up high and and just trim back some of the new growth to encourage good flowering and so it doesn't get too big in the way from us. There's a bonsai laburnum or a laburnum tree that's always been growing in a pot, let's call it that. The pond is well covered with duckweed, salix lanata, little clusters of pots with all sorts of things in. Another of the iris sibiricus. This one looks good if you get the angle right and get the, the iris and the laburnum in the background. Across some of the trees in pots or other. I was candle pruning some of these pines yesterday. Everywhere I'm going in the garden just now as well as the bird song. I don't know if you're hearing I'm hearing the bees. They're everywhere. And of course a lovely scent. I'm standing under the laburnum now, the scent from the laburnum and trees. Ramonda meconii. A nice pink form. This is the big one here. This big clump. It's getting old and not doing so well, not flowering so well. So I'll, I'll pull that out this year, split it down and replant it. Because that's what I did with some of these from another clump the other year. And look how much better they do when they're planted out as rosettes. They, they grow much better when they get congested like that. It's, they, they, they start to flower less. And too crowded, there's too many of them in a small space. So it's nice up here where we can get the view up the garden with the laburnum. So we'll just come down here and I'll head down to Gotheria crassa from New Zealand. Going from seed. It's a Galtheria that um, makes dry capsule. It doesn't make any of the sort of berries or swollen calyx. It's just a, a dry seed capsule. Some nice aquilegias. These are nice because they stay quite compact. They're not too tall. A lot of the aquilegias that seed around are very tall and floppy and often need staking. Corydalis crakes in purple going over in this bed. It's been out for a long while down here. And just heading back to, through the jungle. The Dicentra, full flower. Pretillaria camshatensis. And oh, I see alliums, first of the alliums out in, some more alliums in there. Some more Corydalis. And then coming. Around here we've got another South American shove, sh sh shrub tree, Embothrium, the Embothrium coccinea, there against Albert Schweitzer.
the rhododendron hybrid. But really scar scarlet, I mean really quite a striking colour. Around some more aquilegias, delphiniums, so much. Mechanopsis didn't enjoy the dryness last year, so they're, they're less vigorous this year. We've got more, less flowering stems, but we have had a bit of moisture this year. And so there's good leaf growth, which is, is good because that will help us get good, build up the plants for flowering next year. There it is growing with the Centauria Montana. So let's just finish on this scene representing the Himalayas and all the world, South America. Plants from the world in our garden. So I'll walk around the gardens a bit like a walk around the world. So I'll finish here. Thanks for being with me again. See you next time. Bye.